and welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I'm your host, Demo, and this is 10 Commander Staples that I don't see anymore in the format. Part two, did one of these videos already where I talked about this. You know, I'm doing the research for my 10 cards you should be putting in your decks videos, and I'm going through looking at all these cards, and I'll come across cards where I'm just like, oh man, nobody plays that anymore. Like, it's a card that I used to see all the time, and now I don't see it anymore for various reasons, and obviously, as a lot of people commented on that video, the power level has ramped up in the format over the years, and even though a card like Tooth and Nail is very, very powerful. In fact, it can just end the game. I guess people think that that's too slow. Maybe they want the game to end faster. So that's probably a reason why a lot of these cards don't see play anymore, which is interesting because I think a lot of these cards are really, really good, regardless of whether they might be slow or not. So coming in at number 10, Defense of the Heart. Three and a green enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent controls three or more creatures, sacrifice the vents of the heart, search your library for up to two creature cards, put those cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So speaking of tooth and nail, this basically was like tooth and nail, being able to get any two creatures out of your deck and put them directly into play. And having an opponent with three or more creatures wasn't that difficult. Basically, every time this card came down, your opponents had to remove it right away before your upkeep, or it meant possibly game over. You know, this card's a little expensive. I think, you know, a lot of people mentioned on the other video that some of those cards, because they were such commander staples for a long, long while, that price was an issue and newer players couldn't buy them. And I thought, okay, but what about all the other players that already had them? What about all those people that already own those cards? They're not playing them either. I even had a lot of people on the comments of that video say, yeah, I took Rise of the Dark Realms out of my decks. So I don't think it's just a cost issue. And man, Defense of the Heart is a card that I've seen maybe once in the last year. And it used to be all over the place. It was almost an auto include if you had a green deck. Pattern of Rebirth coming in at number nine was also another card that just went in almost every green deck. Three and a green enchantment aura. Enchant creature. When enchanted creature dies, that creature's controller may search their library for a creature card and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Another really powerful effect. And again, like I said in the 10 cards videos, it was like a card that you were terrified of. Just like with Defense of the Heart, you just didn't know what the guy was going to go get. It combos, obviously, too. So there was also that. It was one of those cards that was kind of terrifying, and I really just don't see it anymore. This one completely disappeared to the point where I actually did mention it in my 10 cards video because I just saw nobody playing it anymore, and it can go in literally any deck, and it's going to be great. Coming in at number eight, Caged Sun. Six mana artifact. As Caged Sun enters the battlefield, choose a color. Creatures you control the chosen color get plus one, plus one. And whenever I lands, ability causes you to add one or more mana of the chosen color. Add an additional mana of that color. So this is one that I'm sure everyone has seen before. It just got reprinted most recently in Commander Anthology Volume 2. So it's been printed in Commander sets more than once. It was an absolute staple in the format forever. It was an auto-include if you were playing a monocolored deck, I think. Even people who played mono green decks would auto-include this in their deck, even though they didn't need the mana. It was just an absolute staple in the format for a long time, and I rarely ever see it anymore. I put this on the list because a page patron of mine, I was doing a deck doctor for him and he had this in his mono blue deck and I was like, wow, there's a card I haven't seen in a while. A lot of people started taking this card out of their deck, I think, because it was just too slow. Another card that people started taking out of their decks because probably it was too slow is Progenitor Mimic. For a blue and a green shapeshifter, oh, oh, you may have Progenitor Mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it has at the beginning of your upkeep, if this creature isn't a token, create a token that's a copy of this creature. Again, this was another card that you would just put in any deck you could fit it in. It was just such fantastic value that people would put it in any deck that had blue and green, because why not? I've seen people put this in their Atraxa deck, even though it has nothing to do with proliferating, just because it it was such a great value card and I just see nobody play it anymore. I still have this in my Tashana deck because my Tashana is sort of a clone copy ETB strategy. So it fits really well there. But, you know, again, it's a card that you would see in 
almost every game, and now I almost never see it. I guess because, you know, six mana, then I gotta wait a whole nother turn before I get the first copy. It's good at copying ETB creatures, I think. Like, if I copy an ETB creature, I get that ETB right away. Like, I copy an Eternal Witness, I get something out of my graveyard right away, even though six mana is a lot for that. And then if it sticks around to the next turn, I get that other one. So, you know, I think this was one of those cards, though, that it was a target. Just like with Defense of the Heart, as soon as you played it, people will be like get it off the table immediately and so maybe people started taking it out of their deck for that reason because it just wasn't worth it to pay six mana to get you know that one eternal witness effect now maybe you can start putting it back in your deck because I, I think people are a little less weary of it than they used to be so if you can stick it and it does stay in play for a while it is a really fantastic card coming in at number six tempt with discovery three and a green sorcery tempting offer search your library for a land card Put it onto the battlefield. Each opponent may search their library for a land card and put it onto the battlefield for each opponent who searches their library this way. You get to search your library for land card and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Very powerful effect. And again, another card that was just an auto include in just about any deck that could fit it because everyone searched for their lands, right? You would go, hey, you guys want to search for a land? And they would go get a land and all three opponents get a land. That means you get four lands and getting four Four lands into play untapped for four mana is bonkers. Obviously, that's incredibly good, especially since you can go get your Cabal Coffers and your Urborg with it, which is what I do in my Enemas 1 deck. Basically, this card got killed, you know, and I'm going to blame the Command Zone for this one. They forever told everybody, do not go get a land. If someone casts Temp with Discovery, you do not go get a land out of your deck. And so what ends up happening, if no one else does it, then you end up paying four mana to go get one land. So obviously, that makes it not nearly as good. I still like it in my name as one deck because even if I can just go get my Urborg and put it directly into play for mana, I'm okay with that. A lot of times I'll get at least one other guy who go get a land and so that way I can get my coffers and my Urborg. But basically the general mentality in the format with this card just became you don't search. You just don't. Whenever someone casts Temp with a Discovery, you do not go get a land so that you can screw them and they only get one. Well, that's basically what killed this card. I used to put this in all my green decks. Now I have it in just the one. And basically that's why. It's because everyone decided no one's going to search for a land, so you're only going to get the one. And then it's just not that great. Coming in at number five, Steel Hellkite. Six mana, dragon, five, five with flying. Pay two mana. Steel Hellkite gets plus one, plus oh until end of turn. Or you can pay X and destroy each non-land permanent with mana value X whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellkite. This turn, activate only once each turn. So again, another card that used to go in so many decks because it was removal. It was colorless removal and I have this in my colorless removal list. It is a great colorless option for removal and if you were in a mono red deck and you needed to get rid of enchantments, it was this or Chaos Warp if someone threw a Song of the Dryads on your commander. I mean, it's kind of slow. You know, you got to play it and then the next turn you got to attack. Then you got to pay the mana if you want to get that Song of the Dryads off your commander. But it was an option, right? And there just wasn't that many options back then for stuff like this. If you were in a mono black deck, same thing. You wanted to get rid of enchantments. This was probably your only way to do it. Now they got Feed the Swarm, right? So now maybe there are more options. That's one of the reasons why this card has disappeared from the format a little bit. You know, you got Blast Zone, which basically sort of does a similar thing to this and is a land and there's not nearly as many conditions on it so it's probably a way better option for me i don't have this in any decks i probably would still play it in a dragon deck or an artifact creature deck i think it's still a great fit there definitely has disappeared from the format though coming in at number four staff of nin six mana artifact at the beginning of your upkeep draw a card tap staff and in deals one damage to any target it's extra card draw right in a colorless form again this is in my colorless draw options in commander for that reason all also has that pinging effect, which is really, really handy. And another card that was just everywhere. You would see this in almost every game. And if you were in a mono white deck, a mono red deck particularly, this was just an auto include because it was a good draw option in a color that didn't draw very well. Just a really, really popular card in the format for a long time, and I never see it anymore. This one, I definitely, like, I don't think I've seen anyone with a Staff and Nin in their deck in over a year for sure. You know, I, I think it's still a pretty good card 
in the format, yeah, it's a six mana card that doesn't really impact the board right away. I mean, you do get to ping something right away, you know, so that's not bad. You know, obviously Immortal Sun probably would be a much better option for six mana, I think. I mean, it definitely is a better option for six mana. But just because you have a better option doesn't mean you don't play the other one. That's what I hear people say all the time about my lists is, oh, well, why would I play this card when I can play this card? Well, because you want more than one in your deck. This is a singleton format, right? You don't just put Immortal Sun in your deck and say, oh, that's enough card draw. I'm good. No, you want Staff of Nin and Immortal Sun and maybe Mind's Eye or something, right? You want several options because you're not necessarily going to draw the best option. So maybe you have to go with lesser options. And I really think this is still a very playable card in the format for sure. Coming in at number three, and man, these top three are were absolute auto-includes in decks. Back in the day, Luminarch Ascension, one and a white enchantment at the beginning of each opponent's end step. If you didn't lose life this turn, you may put a quest counter on Luminarch Ascension. And when it has four or more quest counters on it, you can pay one and a white to create a four, four white angel creature token with flying. This was just, if I'm playing a white deck, this goes in it. I mean, I'm serious. Like it seemed like when I first started playing Commander, especially every deck that had white in it had this card. It seemed like almost every game I played, someone was playing this on turn two and then everyone started freaking out obviously because that person's going to get the counters on it right away because no one's got any attackers out and then they can just completely go nuts and start going to town with it paying two mana to make a four four white angel creature token is ridiculous now this has just become you know i mean i think people probably still put this in their atraxa deck probably because you can proliferate those counters probably people put this in their white angel tribal decks maybe in a token deck this is probably good i really don't hardly ever see it anymore i'm basing this list off of how often I used to see it compared to how much I see it today. I used to see this card every single day in almost every single game, and now I see it almost never, right? It used to be an absolute staple in the format to the point where everybody put it in their white decks just because it was so good, and now I hardly ever see it anymore. Coming in at number two, and another absolute auto-include was Assemble the Legion. Three, a red and a white enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a muster counter on Assemble the Legion. Then create a 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature token with haste for each muster counter on Assemble the Legion. This was an auto-include if you played a Boros deck, okay? I mean, I'm serious. If you played a Boros deck, this was the first card you put in your deck, almost assuredly. Assemble the Legion was another card that I saw very regularly. It was considered to be a really good, like almost a busted card because it would just sit there giving you value spitting out those tokens every turn, right? It, it's really actually a very good card, okay? Of course, it is a five mana card that doesn't impact the board right away. This is a quintessential card like that. You're gonna pay five mana and get nothing for this until your first upkeep. And that's probably part of the reason why it disappeared. However, if you can get this to stick, it is so good. So at the beginning of that first upkeep, you put a counter on it, then you make a 1-1 one, one token with haste that you can attack with right away or sacrifice, do whatever you want with. The next turn, you put another token now you're creating two and the one you created last turn is still there that guy's still there assuming he didn't die or you sacrificed him so you have the one from the last turn and now you get two more and then you get three so by the time you're on turn three you have six of those tokens in play this multiplies really really quickly and that's why people liked it so much in commander games also you know there wasn't a lot of fantastic boros cards back then so this is just one of those cards where it's actually a really good boros card so that's why it was an auto include in everyone's decks and man I just, I haven't seen Assemble the Legion in a Commander game in at least two years, probably. Nobody plays it anymore. And coming in at number one, another card that I really just don't see anymore is Black Market. Three black, black enchantment. Whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on Black Market. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add a black mana for each charge counter on Black Market. And again, this was an auto-include in a black deck, especially a mono black deck, auto-include. Everyone put this in their mono black decks. You know, I'm sure a lot of people still do. I'm not saying, this is not a card that I think has disappeared. I've probably seen it a few times. I think probably a lot of people put this in their mono black decks a lot. Maybe even a few of those other color combinations. But it is definitely a card that I saw in like every single game when I first started playing. And now I rarely ever see it. And again, 
it's a five mana card that doesn't impact the board right away. And I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, you play it for five mana and it does nothing for you until creatures die. And even worse than Assemble the Legion, you know, Assemble the Legion, you're guaranteed to get something on your upkeep. This is a card that actually could just stick in play for a little while and do nothing for you. Coming around to your next turn, if no creatures have died, you get no mana. You get, you still get nothing for this. But you're probably going to want to play it in a deck where maybe you're sacrificing creatures so you can guaranteed put counters on it. But just like with Assemble the Legion, if you stick this and it stays for a while, it gets out of hand really fast. One board wipe, eight creatures die. Now you're getting eight black mana on every one of your pre-combat main phases. That's bananas. It can be the best ritual effect in black if you can get it to stick. I mean, even an Urborg and Coffers is going to maybe net you 12 mana. Black market, I've seen people get like 20, 30 mana off their black markets if they can keep them in play for a while. Most of the cards on this list were cards that were a target. You'd play them and people would be like, get that thing off the board right away before it gets out of hand. That Assemble the Legion or that Black Market or that Luminarch Ascension, people were terrified of them, so you had to remove them right away. So it almost made them seem like they weren't as good as they were because they got removed so quickly. So maybe now that these cards are getting out of circulation a little bit, maybe they can be revisited. Like maybe now you can play and Assemble the Legion in a game and no one's going to care about it. So it's just going to sit there collecting counters. And next thing you know, you're going to be creating five or six soldier tokens every turn and your opponents are going to be like holy crap what happened i mean a lot of these cards are still really good i think they were absolute staples in the format for a long time and i just don't see a lot of them anymore so maybe it's time to revisit them i don't know but that is it for today that is 10 more staples that i don't see in the format anymore and thanks for tuning in 